वॉक स्लोली बट नेवर बैकवर्ड ऑन द फर्स्ट डे ऑफ क्लास जेरियोलिस्मन अ प्रोफेसर एट द यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ फ्लोरिडा डिवाइडेड हिज फिल्म फोटोग्राफी स्टूडेंट इन टू टू ग्रुप्स एवरी वन ऑन द लेफ्ट साइड ऑफ द क्लास रूम ही एक्सप्लेन वुड बी इन द्वान्टिटी ग्रुप दे वुड बी ग्रेडेड सर्ली ऑन द अमाउंट ऑफ वर्क दे प्रोड्यूस्ड ऑन द फाइनल डे ऑफ क्लास ही वुड टैली द नंबर ऑफ फोटोज सबमिटेड बाई ईच स्टूडेंट वन हंड्रेड फोटोज वुड रेट एन ए नाइन्टी फोटोज आर बी एटी फोटोज आर सी एंड सो ऑन मीन वाइल एवरी वन ऑन द राइट साइड ऑफ द रूम वुड बी इन द क्वालिटी ग्रुप दे वुड बी ग्रेडेड ओनली ऑन द एक्सलेंस ऑफ देयर वर्क दे वुड ओनली नीड टू प्रोड्यूस वन फोटो ड्यूरिंग द सेमेस्टर बट टू गेट एन ए इट हैड टू बी अ नियरली परफेक्ट इमेज एट द एंड ऑफ द टर्म ही वॉज सरप्राइज टू फाइंड दैट ऑल द बेस्ट फोटोज वर प्रोड्यूस्ड बाई द क्वान्टिटी ग्रुप ड्यूरिंग द सेमेस्टर दीज स्टूडेंट्स वर बिजी टेकिंग फोटोज एक्सपेरिमेंटिंग विद कंपोजिशन एंड लाइटिंग testing out various methods in the dark room and learning from their mistakes in the process of creating hundreds of photos they owned their skills meanwhile the quality group sat around speculating about perfection in the end they had little to show for their efforts other than unverified theories and one mediocre photo it is easy to get bogged down trying to find the optimal plan for change the fastest way to lose weight the begin program to build muscle the perfect idea for a side hustle we are so focused on figuring out the best approach that we never get around to taking action as volunteer once wrote the best is the enemy of the good i refer to this as the difference between being in motion and taking action the two ideas sound similar but they are not the same when you are in motion you are planning and strategizing and learning those are all good things but they don't produce a result action on the other hand is the type of behavior that will never deliver an outcome if i outline 20 ideas for article i want to write that's motion if i actually sit down and write an article that section if i search for a better diet plan and read a few books on the topic that's motion if i actually eat a healthy meal that section sometimes motion is useful but it will never produce an outcome by itself if doesn't matter how many times you go talk to the personal trainer that motion will never get you in shape only the action of working out will get the result you are looking to achieve if motion doesn't lead to results why do we do it sometimes we do it because we actually need to plan or learn more but more often than not we do it because motion allows us to feel like we are making progress without running the risk of failure most of us are experts at avoiding criticism it doesn't feel good to fail or to be judged publicly so we tend to avoid situations where that might happen and that's the biggest reason why you slip into motion rather than taking action you want to deal a failure it's easy to be in motion and convince yourself that you are still making progress you think i have got conversations going with four potential clients right now this is good we are moving in the right direction or i brainstormed some ideas for that book i want to write this is coming together motion makes you feel like you are getting things done but really you are just preparing to get something done when preparation becomes a form of procrastination you need to change something you don't want to merely be planning you want to be practicing If you want to master a habit the key is to start with repetition not perfection if don't need to map out every feature of a new habit you just need to practice it this is the first take away of the third law you just need to get your reps in how long does it actually take to form a new habit 
Hybrid formation is the process by which a behavior becomes progressively more automatic through repetition. The more you repeat an activity, the more the structure of your brain changes to become efficient at that activity. Neuroscientists call this long-term potentiation, which refers to the strengthening of connections between neurons in the brain based on recent patterns of activity. With each repetition, cell-to-cell -cell signaling improves and the neural connections tighten. First, described by neuropsychologist Donald Hebb in 1949, this phenomenon is commonly known as Hebb's law. Neurons that fire together, wire together. Repeating a habit leads to clear physical change in the brain. In musicians, the cerebellum, critical for physical movements like plugging a guitar string or pulling a violin bow, is larger than it is in non musician Mathematician, meanwhile, have increased gray matter in the inferior paternal level, which plays a key role in computation and calculation. Its size is directly correlated with the amount of time spent in the field. The older and more experienced the mathematician, the greater the increase in gray matter. When scientists analyzed the brains of taxi driver in London, they found that the hippocampus, a region of the brain involved in spatial memory, was significantly larger in their subjects than in non-taxi drivers. Even more fascinating, the hippocampus decreased in size when a driver retired, like the muscles of the body responding to regular weight training. Particular regions of the brain adapt as they are used and atrophy as they are abundant. Of course, the importance of repetition in establishing habits was recognized long before neuroscientists began poking around. In 1860, the English philosopher George H. Lewis noted, in learning to speak a new language, to play on a musical instrument, or to perform uncustomed movements, great difficulty is felt, because the channels through which each sensation has to pass have not become established but no sooner has frequent repetition cut a pathway than this difficulty vanishes. The actions become so automatic that they can be performed while the mind is otherwise engaged. Both common sense and scientific evidence agree. Repetition is a form of change. Each time you repeat an action, you are activating a particular neural circuit associated with that habit. This means that simply putting in your reps in one of the most critical steps you can take to encoding a new habit. It is why the students who took turns of photos improved their skills while those who merely theorized about perfect photos did not. One group engaged in activity practice, the other is passive learning, one in action, the other in motion. All habits follow a similar trajectory from effortful practice to automatic behavior, a process known as automaticity. Automaticity is the ability to perform a behavior without thinking about each step, which occurs when the non-conscious mind takes over. One of the most common questions I hear is, how long does it take to build a new habit? But what people really should be asking is, how many does it take to form a new habit? That is, how many repetitions are required to make a habit automatic? There is nothing magical about time passing with regard to habit formation. It doesn't matter if it's been 21 days or 30 days or 300 days. What matters is the rate at which you perform the behavior. You could do something twice in 30 days or 200 times. It's the frequency that makes the difference. Your current habits have been internalized over the course of hundreds, if not thousands of repetitions. New habits require the same level of frequency you need to string together enough successful attempts until the behavior is firmly embedded in your mind and you cross the habit line. In practice, 
it doesn't really matter how long it takes for a habit to become automatic. What matters is that you take the actions you need to take to make progress. Whether an action is fully automatic is of less importance. To build a habit, you need to practice it. And the most effective way to make practice happen is to adhere to the third law of behavior change. Make it easy. The chapter that follow will show you how to do exactly that.